while we're talking about politics, we might as well be talking about religion. Oh. Great. Okay. The Pope, for all you Catholics out there, the Pope says it's okay to believe in aliens. Oh, there you go. See? It was a good story. I wasn't, like, bringing anything in. It says the Vatican has now given the all clear for Catholics to believe in life beyond our planet. Uh, the Jesuit director of the Vatican Observatory stated in an interview that our universe is just simply too big to rule out additional forms of life, even intelligent ones. <laughs> See, there you go. It goes on for a little bit, blah, blah, blah. Uh, and then the person who wrote the article is actually quite funny. And it says, uh, so do aliens have to believe in Christians as well? <laughs> like, what if the aliens are Jewish or believers in Ekankar, for instance? Is there an alien heaven? But, you know, those are that's a whole other topic as far as I'm concerned. I'm just glad that finally the Pope has said something I can agree with. How's that? <laughs> There. Works for me. <laughs> I'm ready with your image. That was lightning speed. Wow. Wow. Here we go. Here we go. You guys ready for this? Let the image speak for itself. Here it goes. Here it goes. Ooh. It's pretty, isn't it? It's pretty. What is it? Very cool. It's a supernova. That's cool. And we are worried that someone has stolen our supernovas. How dare they? I know. How can you steal a this supernova? This picture happens to be the youngest known supernova in our galaxy, a mere 140 years old. The unassumingly named G1.9 plus 0.3, at least I think that's how you say it, is at least 200 years younger than the previous youngest known supernova, and it grew by 16% over just the last 22 years. However, NASA's Chandra Observatory was able to confirm North Carolina State University and throw physicist Stephen Reynolds' suspicion you know, you could, that it was a supernova. You could figure out how to pronounce it before we go live. I could, but why bother? <laughs> There's just one problem. NASA officials admitted in a teleconference our galaxy is still missing about 50 supernovas. How dare they? The idea is that NASA's only identified 10% supernovas of, of the supernovas in our galaxy. Wait, was this the NASA announcement? I very well could have been. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, anyhow, yeah. There should be about 60 of them. We've only identified 10. It got windy so, all of a sudden. It is very windy. <laughs> I hope you can hear me. <laughs> 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 so that means that we're missing supernovas. Or we don't know how to identify them. They must clearly look different than what we thought they were. And uh, who knows? Or is our galaxy just simply different from other spiral galaxies in that we just have a lower supernova count than everyone else. Could be. Now, I believe it's actually true that our sun will never go supernova. <gasps> what? Never ever. I think it's a Starbucks or people, a cat in the chat room, here, back me up. I believe it is not possible for our sun to actually go supernova. The other fun thing, again, about this article, I apparently like to read articles about people who write the way that I think, if that makes any sense. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yep, go ahead. Okay, it says the NASA conference call that this person wrote, or had with the NASA, yep. was mostly civil except for one guy who broke in on the line in a frenzy of pound sign pressing and then yelled, Hi! Uh, I want to talk to you. I want to I talk. Let's talk about uh, your consortium with China. The operator hurried him off the line and then the call ended. <laughs> Thinking they'd already been disconnected, one of the NASA scientists remarked, well, apart from a couple of loonies, I think that went quite well. <laughs> <laughs> so that was the NASA conference call. <laughs> Must have been. <laughs> so there it you go. It made me snort. That's how funny that was. <laughs> no. <laughs> there you go. Oh, man. Is that enough space that's news for you guys? You know, that's, that's great. All right, when we come back, we're going to have, for the first time, I think, ever, we're going to have to air disclaimers to make this uh, to make this go. So we're going to be talking space and politics. That's the main topic of chat for the for the night and uh, we've got pages and just information and we're going to be talking about presidential candidates and where they stand with NASA in the United States so stay with us. Ooh, I have to hit buttons.
boom, check it out, disclaimer. Basically saying that these are our opinions. Well, Ben's opinions. My opinion. Well, you know, your opinions as well. And anyone that's considered a sponsor on the show or associated with the show, they're not their opinions. They're just opinions. By the way, we're allowed to change our opinions if the data changes as well. We're not people who just have to stick to one opinion. You can never, never go around with it. So, you know, if, if data changes or if something uh, is, is different in the data, then, of course, we can say, you know what, that wasn't quite right. I was wrong. You know, this is where I think we should go from there. So that's, uh, that's our disclaimer. And this is designed to be civil. You know, politics sometimes people get really passionate about, and that's not what this is for. This is basically to tell people um, a disturbing problem that I found kind of, I don't want to say on accident, but I was basically doing research on politics and space and who, wa who I would vote for mm -hmm. based on their backing of the space program. Mm -hmm. And I'm in the process of writing an article at spacevidcast.com slash politics. Now, it's not quite done, but you can read it, uh, the, the work as it's, it's getting done. And there are three candidates right now. We've got McCain, uh, Clinton, and Obama. And if you are a fan of the Constellation Project, then the best person to vote for is absolutely none of them, it turns out. None I of say them. Right in Neil Armstrong. <laughs> none of them seem to have a very strong position on the Constellation program. And Obama is an interesting creature. We'll start with Obama. Wow. <laughs> the weather does not want to cooperate. It's blowing stuff my way. Um, it's like, don't talk politics. Yeah, but I look so sexy mm -hmm. right now. With the wind blowing? Yeah. What about me? No. <laughs> so. So Obama has come out and said that he wants to funnel money away from the Constellation Project and into his pre, uh, what his preschool, his pre-kindergarten, that's preschool, right? Yes. Uh, his preschool program and delay the Constellation by five years. Now, he doesn't actually talk about how he's going to do that. Uh, thank you for the link, Ed. Uh, we'll, we'll add that to the show notes as well. So... He's going to funnel money away and he's going to delay Constellation. Then he's kind of, you know, a lot of people have asked him, why are you pitting education against the space program? That doesn't make a lot of sense to me. Not at Actually, all. Actually, I, I feel like they go hand in hand. Absolutely. You know, you wouldn't, why, why steal from this? There are, we don't have an unlimited budget. Right. I, I'm not, I'm not crazy, right? I mean, obviously you we need money to make these. more. Right? Yeah. Well, we could. <laughs> hey, <laughs> there's an idea. <laughs> it doesn't quite work that way. But, um. Oh, great total. I'll talk about that in a minute. Uh, so, I lost my I lost my train of thought. Oh, oh, oh. So, we, we don't have a limited budget. So, you we've got to find this money somewhere. But why do we have to steal it from NASA? A company, an organization, not a company, an organization that is already pretty underfunded. And in the article, spacevidcast.com slash politics, I lay out what I think are our three options that we should do. One is either give NASA more money, the money they need to succeed at the programs that they have on their on their plate, specifically doing a manned mission or a human mission to Mars. Two, leave NASA as the status quo, which I think is the absolute worst option possible, and I'll explain that in a moment. Or three, basically for all intents and purposes, revamp NASA into more of an FAA type Okay. organization that just monitors and sets policies on space but allow the privatized sector to actually do the space travel okay the reason i think option number two simply doesn't make sense is that right now nasa is so big and they've got enough money where it's it makes more sense for the private sector to try to win the nasa contracts okay. than it does for them to try to go out and do it themselves okay. now a few innovators and a few visionaries mm -hmm. like uh, branson and and right. you know the, those guys <clears throat> They're, they're doing it on, all on their own. Mm -hmm. But, oh, the chat box is frozen. <laughs> That's amazing. Oh, that, 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 just, that just totally threw me off guard. <laughs> Haven't had that happen before. All right, let's try doing that. Let's try doing this. Actually, DS Gamer is saying in the uh, chat room that you apparently can't see because our chat box is frozen, so I apologize for that, uh, that NASA needs to stay as the pioneer. And yeah. I, well, they don't, but they don't, okay, you know, we're, screw it, we're just going to drop the chat box and I guess we won't have any graphics on the screen. That makes me sad. 